Let's see if we can make a bowl from this pile of wood. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Welcome to another episode of Wolf Ridge Woodworking. So we've got a few pieces of wood here. We're going to attempt to make a bowl. So this is a, a piece of maple that's left over from the, the snowman project I did over um, the Christmas over December. And so when I, I broke it down for a bowl, it actually is thinner. Make sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, it's, it's thinner this way than this way. So I thought, well, you know, this would be a good way to kind of inlay, or not inlay, but insert some other pieces of wood to kind of get the, the thickness out, or not the thickness, but the width out a little bit so that it matches and I can get a, a, a bigger bowl out of it rather than getting a bowl from the narrowest dimension. Yeah, I think that, I think that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna, there's a couple of ways that I, I could do this, and I don't know if this is the right way. Maybe somebody can comment down below. But I had originally thought, because it's narrower this way, I thought, well, let me just cut the wood here and then put in some, you know, some pieces. But that is end grain going into side grain, I think. And I don't know if that is the right way it was supposed to be. So again, maybe somebody can comment. So the way that I know, I think is right, because I've seen other people do it, maybe not the way I'm going to do it, but... I'll, Bear with me. It, maybe it'll make sense in a second. So what I want to do is I want to cut the piece like this. Flip these over like this so that now it's going to be side grain to side grain. And again, it'll push it out to the right width, I think. That's the plan at least. So I have thought this through a little bit, but maybe not quite so much, uh, probably par for, for my course, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So last time I tried to cut this piece on my table saw, which is a pretty good table saw, I think, and it's got a, a, a really good blade on it, it struggled um, and it kind of burnt it a little bit, as you can see here on the ends. But what I had the better luck with is taking it over to my um, bandsaw. Again, it, I, I won't have to worry about cleaning up the edge is because it's that end's going to be flipped up. Side grain is already milled. It came milled like that when I got it. So I feel like I'm rambling a lot, but I think I needed to explain kind of what the plan is. So bandsaw to cut this, flip it over, take this over to the table saw, and use the crosscut set that I just met, uh, made. I will link it, I think it's up here. I'll, I'll try to link it up here so you can see how I made that. But I'm gonna use a crosscut sled to uh, cut these down to the dimensions that I need. Um, let's see, these are roughly four inches, a little over four inches. This is eight inches, so actually, no, I think I'm going to cut it this way. That's what it was. I'm cutting it this way because it'll bring that part out. That's right. So that's about four inches. Uh, so it's eight inches wide. So when I cut it, flip it, it should be, actually, no, it would go by the thickness here, wouldn't it? Three inches. Anyway, I might have to do some more figuring, but, you know, that's kind of how I do things um, here in Wolf Ridge Woodworking. Um, but anyway, so let's see what we can do with this. We need to cut this to four inches to match the length of our other pieces. So I've got it set up here, got a, uh, the uh, stop set up at four inches. So we're gonna cut this, and then we are going to cut two pieces of this. And this is paduk, paduk and walnut. So here we go. We've got it uh, all cut up and uh, temporarily put together. And I think that's gonna make a, a nice bowl. It is final dimensions, pretty close to what I was expecting, about seven and a half 
by eight. So pretty close. So seven and a half inch, probably a round bowl that I'm going to get out of this. So need to glue it up first. So it's going to start with these pieces here and then get them and then we'll uh, get going. Now it's going to take me a little bit to spread all the glue, but I'm using uh, tight bond three just because it could be used in the kitchen and just, uh, you know, want to make sure that there's not going to be a problem. So here we go. So now let's uh, tighten these clamps up. So we'll leave this sit overnight. Actually, it's going to sit for a couple of days because it is Friday evening and uh, tomorrow Saturday, and I am going over to Woodcraft because Johnny Malecki, Ann of All Trades, and uh, Carl Jacobson is going to be at Woodcraft. So I'm very excited to go over there, hopefully meet those guys and talk to them. Uh, I've been watching Carl, especially turning, um, so I really uh, respect him and I'm uh, really looking forward to meeting him and all of them. So anyway, so this will probably be Sunday before I can get to uh, get back to it, but uh, it'll be instantaneous for you. So we've got it mounted in the lathe, and when I say we, <laughs> I mean I have it mounted in the lathe. And we got it uh, pretty round, uh, except for a couple of, on the ends, but that's okay, we can deal with that. So now what I need to do is turn this uh, round here first, then once I have that more in balance and maybe can get up a little higher in speed, um, I'm going to face off here on the side, and uh, we are going to be using our easy wood tools, our uh, carbide round bit, and our uh, square bit, and then various other tools. And I'll try to tell which tools I'm using and what speed the lathe is, uh, the lathe, I should say, uh, as I go. And as always, we are going to be wearing our face shield. Uh, you know, I want to protect this money maker, so to speak. Um, I've got a face for radio, and I need to protect it. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. I always start with my lathe at the lowest speed and then work up. You know, that's just something that I do. I feel it's a little safer doing that. So let's uh, turn the speed up and let's see the, how fast we can get it before everything starts shaking. I think we're going to go right there. It's around 750. Um, hopefully I can get it up a little bit more once I have it faced off. So uh, we're going to start out with our square bar, square carbide cutter, I should say, and, uh, and round it out and then go from there. Well, this is taking a long time and I look at it and it's, it's giving me a little bit of tear out. So <clears throat> I think I need to go and sharpen these, put a dot there for where it started. And I don't know if I went the wrong way or 
this wood is just so hard that it's uh, dulling the carbide. I don't, I don't, I doubt that, but maybe I just didn't get a good sharp on it last time. So I'm going to stop and go and sharpen these and uh, I'll be back. I've got it round, so sharpening it did make a, a, a big difference. There's still a little bit of tear out, but that's okay. I can fix that with uh, my um, round nose uh, scraper. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. I can fix that. But uh, that made a big difference. So just note to self, um, you know, if you are turning and you're just not getting the results you think you should normally get, that, you know, go ahead and just sharpen it. Um, I thought I had a sharp edge, but you know, maybe I didn't, I wasn't consistent when I was twisting it. I, I, I need to make a mental note to myself that if I mark it, always twist it one way or another, like clockwise, you know, that'd probably be the easiest way to think. So anyway, that's, that was a, something that I just, uh, you know, sh I, sh I know better, but I just didn't do. So anyway, so now that we've got it round, we are going to now start working on uh, the bowl shape. I'm going to do that before I work on the bottom anymore. Um, first thing I want to do is about in the middle, because what I'm thinking is what I want to do is I kind of want a shape of the bowl so that it's a high spot in the center and then it rounds this way. And then on the inside here, I'll undercut that. Um, I can't do it too much because I don't have uh, like hollowing tools. Um, so it's going to be kind of a gradual, um, and this probably will have more of a curve um, than this. Um, I just, I, I won't be able to get under the lip if I do it too much because I don't have the hollowing tools. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna kind of roughly, and this is just for my own kind of gauge to see kind of where I'm at and kind of know that that's kind of the center point where I want to go and start to, you know, curve the bowl uh, a little bit. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the round carbide cutter and start working on uh, rounding this over. What you just saw me doing was using my skew. Um, I was very careful um, and just taking very light passes to get the rest of the tool marks out. And uh, ooh, got some pretty big gouges right there. So I need to go back through that. That must have been when I was going through with the uh, round carbide cutter. But so I need to go through and, um, or maybe it was the ha round nose scraper. It's got a really nice finish. I'm really happy with that. Um, I just need, I don't know if you can even see that on here, but uh, some pretty big gouges right there. Um, not gouges, but they're scrapes. And I like the shape of the bowl. Um, it turned out a little bit different than what I originally planned. Um, I just came in and curved, not curved it in, but it came to a curve here, curved there. I love that curve. And then I just sloped it in. So it'll be a little bit inward and I, I really like the shape and that's you know it's okay to do that is uh you know when you're doing this you know what I, I might even put um a couple of decorative rings on it and use my wire to burn it that might uh add a couple of extra details anyway so i'm going to keep going and done uh, again just going to try to get this out i'm pretty happy with the shape so i probably won't do much with that 
I don't know if I'll do the line because now that I'm thinking about it, you know, this is kind of the feature right here. This, this I think this is a beautiful contrast. So I think putting that line there might deter, take away from it. So I'm going to, unless I change my mind, but right now I think I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to clean this up and then I'll change the camera angle, um, start looking at, at doing the bottom and uh, you know, we'll get this thing sanded and ready to flip. So now what we want to do is we've got that fixed. Now we just want to finish squaring off this bottom here. Uh, shape our bottom, get our final shape, and then I've learned from my mistakes of putting the uh, mortise in there and then finishing this and wind up having to come back and deepen the mortise. But anyway, so I'm going to finish cleaning this off, uh, finish just cleaning this off here so that I've got a nice easy transition. And I do want it to concave a little bit so that it's, again, sitting out on this edge rather than sitting across the hole. So I don't want this flat. I want it concaved a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. And then, so I'm going to do that, could put my concave in, be happy with what the shape is. Then I'll go in and put my mortise in to be able to fit my um, jaws. So let's get started. Now what we need to do is sand this. So I'm going to do my usual start with 150, 220, 320, and then I'm going to apply a sanding sealer and Yorkshire grit. And typical for me, uh, I, I finish mine off the lathe. I've got it turned around, and so now what I'm going to do is, again, just true up this face. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot uh, because I'm going to take most of it out, but uh, I am going to just true it up so it, it balances a little bit better. It's, it's pretty imbalanced because a bulk of the weight is, is now balanced. But anyway, I just want to, I just want to take this uh, down and get it uh, level. And then probably what I've been doing lately is going in with my square carbide cutter and getting a bulk of the material out, just taking a little bit at a time, and then I come in with a round carbide and get the uh, start to get the slope in there. Uh, eventually, I'm going to turn uh, both uh, carbide tools and in traditional wood working or wood turning tools, you know, bowl gouges and such. And uh, it's something that I've got to just keep. Uh, I just got to practice. But anyway, so let's uh, let's get started with this. I've taken it down as far as I can take it with the square carbide cutter. It's now it's down to where it's going to start making that curve in down at the bottom. So I'm going to switch over to my round carbide cutter 
and I'm going to readjust the tool rest so that I can get a little bit further deep in there. Make sure it's not hitting. I've done that before, uh, but nope, it's, uh, it's good. Make sure everything's locked down. All right, so now we're going to switch over and get the rest of it with our round carbide cutter. got it to a depth and a wall thickness that I'm happy with. I got a little bit of vibration here on the um, outside that caused some challenges, um, but hopefully I can sand them out. I'm going to go with uh, probably 60 grit sandpaper, pretty aggressive, to um, see if I can fix up some of these vibration marks. So anyway, so I'm going to go 60, 80, you know, 150, 220, 320, like I, uh, I always do, except for adding the 60 and the 80. Put some sanding sealer in it, and then uh, Yorkshire grit. Take it off the lathe, and then we'll, uh, we'll finish it with a, you know, some sort of oil finish off the lathe. If you're wondering what I did with all of those wood shavings, I put them in a bag and I'm going to cast them in resin at a later date, but more to come on that. So this was a lot of fun. It is, in my opinion, uh, just a, a beautiful bowl. I, I love the shape. It's got some weight to it. I, um, it was a heavy piece to start with. It's just, it's got some beautiful weight to it. Um, I just love the contrasting between the maple and the paduk and the walnut. I just, I think that's a beautiful combination. But anyway, so I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. Um, so we need to apply a finish, but before we do that, we need to put uh, the brand on. Well, let's see if I can do this. I am not the best at this. And generally one side looks good. And the other side doesn't, but let's see what we can do. Well, that's not too bad. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper just to clean up the mark a little bit. Nothing big. It is what it is. I got the outside good, but I guess maybe where it was concaved a little bit there, um, it didn't get it. I probably would have been better off going over here in the white part. But what do you do? So let's go ahead and apply some finish. So what I'm going to use today is uh, a little different. I'm going to use some Howard's uh, Feed and Wax. Let me go ahead and shake this up, make sure it's all good. All right, and I've got a rag this time rather than a, a paper towel. The, uh, I think the, there's some wax or oils in the Yorkshire grit, so it does uh, do a little bit to apply a finish, but definitely not what I guess you would consider a finished finish, if that makes sense. So there we go. So we'll be back in just a minute.
another project in the books. It uh, turned out really nicely. Like I said, there was a couple little odd thing or not odd things, but there little things I'm not happy about. But I think it's okay. Um, you can hardly tell it's there, but when the wall got thinner and started uh, hollowing out the sides here, you know, the uh, inside, this began to vibrate some. So I think I may have to try to maybe uh, change my approach and maybe leave some in the bottom, uh, you know, in the center and then hot. And then I've seen other people do that. I'm rambling on, but basically take the wall down first and then do this. So there's some meat to it. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, you, you know, somebody can provide some comments below. Um, but there was a lot of chatter and maybe it's, you know, the, the, I should be using the bowl gouge. Maybe that would do it. I don't know, but I'm, I'd be curious to see what anybody says down in the uh, the bottom. Again, as always, I'm I'm learning, so this is a uh, a learning experience, and uh, definitely learned a lot from this bowl here. Um, anyway, so it's just to recap: it is uh, maple, hard maple, Paduke, walnut, um, blended together and turned. I think the the shape turned out really well. I, I really love the shape. Um, this is a, going to be a gift for for a friend. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you, you, you make it, it's, you know, it came from your head, your hands made it, and it's kind of hard to give it away. But, you know, my house is starting to overflow with bowls. So, um, and, you know, it's, it's okay. I can make more of these. But anyway, it turned out uh, really well. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're new to the channel, I, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button so that you can, uh, you know, easily come back and see some more project videos like this and hit maybe get the notification hit the notification bell so that um, you're notified when I do upload a video and if you could share it I'd, I'd appreciate it you know leave any comments and, and press the like if you did like it but yeah leave any comments of anything you saw maybe that I could have done different could have done better um, but uh, I, as always I really appreciate you guys stepping by, stopping by not stepping but stopping by and I look forward to seeing you on the next project and um, as always I wish you and your family a blessed day thank you